Time flies while you're waiting for starships. Actually, starships fly when they fly a similar trajectory to last time. It's time for another Starbase summary. Talking through what's going on, kicking it off with an RVAC scooting around there. The crane there says hi bay. That's not the high bay, that's the second mega bay. But look at the procession of those massive RVAC nozzles there in the background. Of course, the nozzles are bigger so that they help them get uh, more efficiency when there's no atmosphere, atmospheric pressure specifically, to act as the nozzle. We could do a whole video on that. There's a regular Raptor. See it with the little teeny tiny nozzle there. Still about as big as you. You could curl up inside of it if you wanted to. But you could, you could like live in, well, maybe not live. You could camp in one of the uh, RVAC nozzles there. There's ship 31, says we'll be flying with these stripes. See all the pins that are exposed there in the shiny parts where there are no tiles? Pretty sure it is gonna fly without those tiles on there. The speed tilt on that view. Scroll it back if you wanna see it a little bit more. But uh, maybe that weight isn't needed. Maybe that's how they're gonna catch starships. Maybe they should launch one and see how it turns out without the thermal protection in those areas. You may also notice uh, some of the gap filler. You see how that gap filler on the edge is blue, but in other places it's a gray or white, off-white color. Um, we've seen that sort of across the ship there as they have maybe different types of compounds based on uh, where they are, how much force, how much thermal heating they may get, but something to look out for while you're looking at Ship 31. Move, moving some stuff around here. Great shot. I think these are just miscellaneous parts. Raptors playing the dance of the Raptor Plum Fairy. I don't know. They look like ballet. They're doing a Raptor ballet. That's what it is. Anyways, that was the first thing that popped to my mind whenever I saw that, which is sort of how a lot of these commentaries go. Can you believe potentially less than five days before the next flight, Flight 6 of Starship here? And it's all gas, no brakes. These engines have nothing to do with that flight. They're working on flights after that. I like that. Oh, yeah, the four-leaf clover shirt in there. And the guy who has the manually crank up the pallet jack there. Well, they have robots for this these days. <laughs> Got some maintenance happening on Mega Bay 2. Of course, the environment out there. Is he using blue painter's tape? actually using blue painter's tape like you pick up from Home Depot or whatever. Not sponsored by Home Depot. Unless. Uh, like Masking off that area the environment out there makes these big mega bay buildings just get, they're just rough. The salt air constantly blowing on them. The high humidity. They never really get a chance to dry out. And so you'll see lots of, a lot of surface rust on the buildings. But there it didn't really look like that was the problem. I'm not exactly sure why they were painting or coating that. You have to know the secret password to get the garage door to open up for you so you can bring the Raptor vacuum inside. Watch out for that lift in the background as well. It's probably a compression thing, but once again, we hide it. Back behind the door. So this is what we think is the final piece, the final big piece, the final big chunk at least, of that second OLM, we've seen them assembling like the world's largest, hopefully rocket-proof Lego set in the background there. We've been watching that both from the side and the aerial photos for weeks now. Going to get a quick sunset at the production site over here. You can see all the way in to the Star Factory, there's the parade of nose cones in the Star Factory. I'm trying to come up with a November or turkey-related Thanksgiving reference to balance out the Christmas sugar plum fairies. We're not quite there yet, and those look nothing like turkeys. They don't look like pilgrim hats. I don't know. Help me out. So somebody help me get this into a holiday theme here. I think on <laughs> November 13th we can start talking about Thanksgiving. <laughs> Apparently we're supposed to be selling. We are selling Christmas merch, actually, if you've seen our cool knitted sweaters. But here, check down at the bottom of the SPMTs, you can see some ballast being loaded onto those SPMTs. Huge weights, just massive chunks of steel, iron, and the whole plan there is to move the center of mass of the entire assembly, the entire assembly, down low. Like, the ship weighs so much, right? The SPMTs weigh so much, and what you want is you want to have the center of mass of that whole 
set the ship stacked on the SPMTs as low as possible so that it's more stable as it rolls down the road. So that's why they stack all those weights on there. Banana for scale, still kicking, walking. I think there's actually a, an interesting conversation as to whether or not that banana is facing the correct direction. Like, should his feet, or her feet, I don't know, um, their feet be pointed at the flap there so that when the starship is belly flopping the banana seems to be walking upright or is this when the starship is on its tail end the proper time for the banana to be walking vertically but then when it's belly flopping it looks like the banana is also belly flopping as well maybe i'm of the opinion that this is the correct orientation so that when the ship is belly flopping the banana is also belly flopping i think that might be a camera pod by the way those little bumps have little holes in one side this one's pretty straightforward. It just says Star Factory. Actually, this shot is 60% sky, maybe like 5% by volume, <laughs> lifts, and then some Star Factory in there. <laughs> Looks like the orbital launch pad water park opened up briefly. Here is a water system test spraying out there. Of course, this is how they're able to minimize damage by dealing with the energy of the rocket. It's blasting the pad below it instead of digging a huge crater the energy of the rocket exhaust has to turn that water into steam and it's not just a puddle of steam it's like a big complex cloud of water droplets there so it sucks a lot of energy deals with that energy which is why they spray that water a lot of launch pads do it this is definitely a different design not even the first time this sort of design has been used if i'm not mistaken we're going to kick it forward here because here is Ship 31 sneaking out of the high bay. Look at all the weights. You see the weights down on the bottom? They're painted black and white here with little white triangles. But they've moved that center of mass down low, so those SPMTs are super heavy. And the ship is just like a foam pool noodle balanced on top of the whole thing. I'd, I mean, relatively. I'd, I really wonder. Clearly not the density of a pool noodle, but also not the density of the <laughs> steel plates that they've stacked at the bottom. Oh, this is a view. This looks like a camera or GoPro or something placed on the side of the road facing up. Got a little fan action there in the Star Factory in the background. What good does that fan really do way the heck up there? But here comes the ship. Look at that. It's another unique angle. Like, you're out there, you see these things. It's like, what new unique angle can we capture or share? You can actually see the raptors. Nice. The three sea level raptors in the middle, and then uh, you saw two of the three raptor vacuums there. Scroll back to the beginning of the video, and those were the engines that were being installed in the ship back in Mega Bay 2. So that's what it looks like when they're actually installed on a ship that in potentially less than five days may actually be flying, attempting to fly. Re-entering? Booster being caught? I mean, everything's on the table, it looks like, for Starship Flight 6. Bit of a wider angle here from the highway. Got some drones flying around. The fast-moving things are drones. The slow-moving things are stars. Pretty sure that those weren't any planets there in the background, but maybe they were. If anybody wants to look up the star chart and correct me, congratulations, you have too much time on your hands. Approaching, this is probably coming past the trailer up there near the launch site, bend in the road. You can see the bender <laughs> visor there where Starlinks will come out, potentially in the future. There's the FTS pod, if I'm not mistaken. These are raceways going down the side. Little flippity flapping tape on the front of the aft flap there. Say that ten times fast. Here's the quick disconnect. Just went off screen pretty quickly there, but you can see their hoses going to it if I was seeing that correctly. Here's, remember when I said it was all one assembly? It's because that's, that stand is connected to the SPMTs. You don't just like put it on there and balance it, right? They actually make it one big unit. They strap down, not straps, they chain down that transport stand to the SPMTs because you don't want things weebly wobbling as you drive down Highway 4. It's a tri oh, that's actually kind of cool. The SpaceX sign with the ship. What? Play that clip for longer. That was a cool clip. Anyways, the editor. I'd like to speak with the editor. Here we're going to get it. 
over towards the launch pad. Continuing on with the removal of the massive crane parts. Maybe be on the lookout or those may pop up again. Hey, look, it's the positioner. It's the <laughs> That's actually one of the remote controlled positioners that I put together so that we could have nicer cameras uh, remote controlled in the danger zone. That thing needs some work, but I'm working on it slowly but surely. Talk about a bodge together hack job. Hey, it works okay though. Now what's, that's the draw works. That's the draw works for tower two. Oh, now they're installing the draw works for tower two. This camera, oh geez, this is box cam. Wow. <laughs> What ha Look, the little artifact in the top middle of the screen, that's a chip in the lens from one of the previous Starship flights. But uh, that box cam is normally on the positioner, <laughs> and apparently it was used in the daily. But there you have it, ending it with the booster actually rolling out from the pad. That happened right before I recorded this here. I'm John Galloway. I'm Doss, whatever you want to call me. Thanks to the team out there, Mary and Jack and the SBL Ops. Everybody editing it and getting this ready to go, but uh, we will see you shortly because i got to get on a plane to head to Starship Flight 6. Thanks for watching, y'all.